Good day, everyone. So today I will discuss how I use Coacha in one of the advanced programming courses that I handled last semester. So what is Coacha? Coacha is an online platform for programming classes. Basically, it's a startup that was created by one of our alumni, Mr. Jude Maranga, and is being incubated right now in the Wildcats Innovation Lab. What are the advantages of using Coacha? First of all, it's deployed on an online platform and that supports distance learning and assessment. Teachers can perform real-time monitoring of programming activities. It automatically checks correctness based on the test cases. It contains a database of programming exercises for a variety of languages like C, C++, Java, Python. It tracks tabs and switches. So for example, if you're programming in ProCharm and you decided to search for answers in Google, it will be able to track that and it will uh, count basically the number of types that you change tabs. So this is very useful uh, for checking if the students are you know, cheating or collaborating with each other. So ProCharm has been used in CIT for introductory programming courses since 2018. So we used to use it in the laboratory, even though it's face-to-face. Okay, uh, we have conducted the research. In fact, I used Coachum for the first time in CID in 2018 when I handled the introductory uh, fundamentals of programming class. And based on the results of that particular semester, uh, we were able to produce a research that we presented in the, an international conference in Hong Kong. So Coachum, a smart IDE for teaching and learning programming. It was presented in an international conference. To use as a tool for training our students uh, who are participants in the Philippine Programming Challenge. So we actually deployed seven teams of 10 students each. And then Nathan Bide uh, from different schools, they also deployed several teams. And then the, they had to choose 10 of the top teams. And five out of the top 10 teams are from CID, 50 students, and 40 of those 50 are first year students. Most of them were my students in the introductory programming class. So there they are. And I want to attribute, you know, the success to CodeChamp because CodeChamp, they were able to practice and test their code in CodeChamp. So, however, uh, CodeChamp has not been used in advanced programming courses like object-oriented programming, data structures, and so on. It is because there's a limited set of high-level problems that are in the database of CodeChamp that can be used for these courses. And the reason is, it's because uh, creating a set of problems for these courses needs time. Uh, you need to strategize. It's not that straightforward uh, to do testing uh, for a lot of reasons that I will explain later. So for example, data structures and algorithms. Uh, it's an, uh, considered in this band. It's a third and fourth in the series. So programming exercises require multiple files, header files, multiple C files, interfaces if in Java, I require the implementation of multiple functions. So the problems are complex. Uh, from 10 to 15 functions, each one has to be tested individually. So the testing or the creation of the test cases is challenging. Uh, it also requires integration of multiple files, which is a very important skill now that we need to train our students on. Actually, testing is also a very important skill. So it used to be that we use Web C++. It's an integrated development environment, uh, a desktop-based IDE. We used to do that in the laboratory. Now, if we use Web C, and some teachers are using Web C uh, for some of our classes under distance online mode, it's very challenging because we have to download the student solutions one by one. We have to compile, run, and test. And this is a super time-consuming process. Students work on their desktop. There's no way for us to monitor what's going on uh, unless we do one-by-one -one monitoring. In fact, I think for some of our teachers before, they give a lot of time, a, long, a very long time for the students to finish the exercises. Now, I don't want to do that. I want synchronous laboratory exercise. I want it timed. I want it, um, I want it, uh, I want to monitor them while we are doing their uh, exercises during our synchronous classes. And we cannot monitor if students are looking for solutions in Google no? because they're doing it on their own. Uh, we cannot really monitor if they're collaborating with their classmates, for example. So basically, to solve these challenges, I wanted to push for the use of CodeChamp for data structures. I know that I have to do a little bit of sacrifice, but I think 
um, it will pay off in the end. So that was what I was thinking. I wanted to push for the use of Kocha. So basically what I did is I created a set of programming problems and I deployed them in Kocha. Um, because of the challenging part of creating problems, I also had to use DevC together with Kocha. So some of the exercises have been done in DevC, some of the exercises have been done in Kocha. And then at the end of the course, we evaluated the conduct of the course and asked the students to basically to evaluate no, the use of Kocham as a tool for that class. So this is the class uh, in Kocham, CS244. So these are some of the activities, activity one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have a lot of other optional activities. So these are the problems that I put there. There's a hash table problem, sets, linked lists, binary search trees. Uh, dynamically allocated arrays, basically. So how many problems created? So, for example, um, you have to put the, an explanation, a problem description. I, need, I Personally, I think I need to improve this one. You have to specify the input and output. You have to specify the test cases here. So in general, for each function, there's a set of test cases. And this is the most challenging part. And then you have to specify the files. So you have, I have to create the main program. I have to create the header file, the declaration, the functions, and so on. And this is challenging because you don't only create the problem, you have to answer it. So I have to create the problem, I have to answer it, I have to run it, I have to get the output from my own program so that I can use it at the test cases. That's the only way that I can make sure that the problem is properly written and it can be tested. And the students, if they get it, of course, they will get correct in the test cases. So it takes a lot of time now from problem creation, formulation to actually answering the problem and then putting it, putting all of that in code sham. And sometimes I do not have the time, so I tell them to answer the a problem in WebC instead. So but everything has been done. Now after the struggle of creating the problem, then comes the easy part. You just deploy the problem in code and you can start monitoring what's happening. So here's an example. Um, so you have here um three students. Like while they're doing the exercise, I can actually view the solution if I want to. Uh, but this is a done exercise. And you can see if they have exited the screen, if they did tab switches, I can put deductions if they do that. But usually I just warn them to uh, that they're not supposed to do tab switches and exit the screen. And then at the end of the semester, for example, then you can see the overall score of the student. You can also do, see the leaderboard. I hide it from the students, but I can see it. So I can see how fast the students can answer uh, a particular problem. And I would know now whether uh, uh, if a student was able to answer that, then I know that the other students maybe can answer that too. No? Or, but then not all students will actually get the, the problem. Some will uh, get zero, which is really sad. And then I have to physically look at the code. You know? If they get a zero, I have to evaluate what happened and I have to manually check the, the code. So anyway, at the end of the class, we evaluated this course and this is the result. So we asked the students if they are satisfied with Coachum. 27 said that they are satisfied and 11 said that they are very satisfied. Uh, how easy was Coachum to use? 20 said that it's very, very easy and, for, uh, sorry, Easy and 17 said uh, very easy. Would you recommend Coachum as a laboratory tool? And 67% said that they will recommend Coachum. We asked them what they like, and they said they like the test cases. It gives them a sense of correctness. You know, they are guaranteed that they got a good score in that particular uh, problem. And then ease of use. Look and feel automatic code checking and it's web based. So they have a repository on the web of all of their exercises. So, what we, we're going to talk about Coachum is the difficulty of debugging and tracing errors. Uh, DevC is better. So, this is a recurring problem. I, I raised this issue to the developers of Coachum. And there's a limited screen space, which I also feel, and so I agree with the students in this one. So, that's the feature that I need to improve. I have to prepare more detailed test cases. Um, I think I need more time and I need to be very purposive about this. I need to improve the problem explanation so that other teachers and other students can try them. 
And then I have to add more problems in CodeChamp's database so that there is no more need for Dev C++ in the future. I think I can do this in the future. I have more time. This one is very hectic because of the clustering scheme. For my suggestions, I want a feature that will allow communication between students and teachers, but not between student to student. So if I have an announcement while the laboratory exercise is going on, I can announce it. And then uh, I need a way to assign more detailed scoring for test case. Um, because right now it's all the same. Now, if it's 20 points, each function will get two points. Depend, uh, uh, but some functions are difficult, some functions are easy, so I should be able to assign uh, more points for difficult problems, but unfortunately, I cannot do that. But maybe I can strategize. I just I just I realized that I can strategize about that. But anyway, so other suggestions have been implemented during the semester. Um, the problem with CoCham is because it's timed. So suddenly, uh, you lock the time, right? The time is um, the time limit is done. Uh, so what happens is that. If you're in the middle and there are errors, compile time errors, then you get a zero. But if you have solved already six of the functions, you should get points. So if the students get a zero, I have to manually check the code so that I can adjust the scoring. I have already uh, reported this and we have already implemented the feature that the last successful run will be saved by the system, which is a good thing. Okay, so all in all, uh, conclusion, I think that CodeChunk can be used for more advanced programming courses, provided that the faculty will spend time in creating the questions, and this is very challenging but possible. There is a need for a detailed guide on how test cases and multiple files can be used for integration. Uh, there's a learning curve. It's not as easy and straightforward, uh, but once you get the hang of it, then uh, it becomes a little bit more manageable. And then CoCham really facilitates assessment of programming exercises and prevents cheating. It allows monitoring and it automatically gives feedback to the students as the reference of the code based on the test case. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, to the programming teachers out there, I hope that you can try uh, to use CoCham. Uh, I guarantee that it's a very useful tool. Thank you very much.